about God? What do you know about Satan? What do you know about failure? What do you know about success? What do you know about spirituality? What do you know about demons? What do you know about angels? What do you know about righteousness? What do you know about the victory that is in Christ? What do you know about challenges? What do you know about relationships? These are the things that frame your understanding at a thought realm. Is someone listening to me? So you can see in truth that many of the confessions we make are will be great. I know that is psychologically consoling, but from the lens of honesty, many people will not be great. Now, they are far from it because there is no superstition around it. It is a labor in the spirit to obtain superior transformation. A CEO is not a body wearing a suit. A CEO is a mindset that has been transformed. Are we together? Perhaps in this case, the thought realm. Now, I want you to lay your hands on your head. After praying, we are going to get into a serious phase of mind transformation right now. Someone's mind is about to change. I'm about to share a few thoughts with you. Please lay your hands generously on your head and pray. Pray crying from the depth of your heart. As you are praying, I want you to see all the destinies that are connected to you. If you are a man of God here, see all the destinies that have been praying for your manifestation. In the name of Jesus, a new season by the power of the Holy Spirit. A man of God like never before, an end time warrior like never before, a kingdom financier like never before. Through the excellency of my renewal, the excellency of my transformation, something is about to happen to your mentality. I like you to pray, open up your spirit and decree and declare that the former me is about to leave for the new me to come. The former man of God is about to leave for a new one to come. The failure is living, the victor is coming, the defeated one is living. The victor is coming the one who is under the yokes of demons and curses is about to live through the excellency of my renewal Go ahead and pray. Kaparus katebash, embrakata pakatos katefrakata belaketosh, embrakata pakata katos katefrakete, lish kaparekata parus kiata, embrakata parika toskiata. Prophecy is about to happen in my life. Prophecy is about to happen to my life. I came to church tonight for my transformation. I came to church tonight for my rising. Finally, I'm accessing the mindset that will allow the anointing to rest upon my life. I'm accessing the mindset that will allow the blueprint of my prophetic destiny to begin to work. Pray one more minute. Oh, the failure is living, living right now. No matter how long it has been there, the defeated one is living for the victor to manifest. In Jesus name I pray every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome one more time every Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You have a victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. All right, please sit down, fasten your seatbelt, and let me give you the belief systems for victory. The mentality of a victor. Be ready to write. Number one, the first belief system that you must adopt to walk in victory. The first belief system is an understanding of your positional advantage in Christ. Please write, let's hurry up. We have a lot to cover up and God will grant us grace. Belief system number one that turns any believer to a sign and a wonder is an understanding of your positional advantage in Christ. Knowing that Jesus died for you is not enough. You must understand the implication of his death, his burial, his resurrection. For therein lies your victory as a believer. Ephesians 4, 2, 4 and 6. 
Ephesians 2, 4 to 6. It says, But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, verse 5, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. Everybody say together with Christ. One more time. Say together with Christ. For by grace are ye saved. Verse 6. And had raised us up together. The key word is together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. The consciousness of your positional advantage. And Ephesians 1 from verse 20 to 23 tells us the implication of being in that position. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Verse 21. Far above. Let's list them. Number one principality number two power number three might number four dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come 22 it says and hath put all things under his feet say all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church 23 which is his body the church is his body Every authority that was given to the head was also given to the body. The Bible says the fullness of him that filled all in all. Say your positional advantage. It's a revelation and it's a consciousness that must come upon you. That although you walk in the earth, the Bible says you have been exalted. There is a seat of authority that where Jesus sat in victory, that is where you sit. Now, it's not just Pentecostal gibberish. The Bible says it and let God be true and all men liars. It is not when you are translated and you experience a great life that you believe it. It is believing it that transits you. This reality is not a physical reality. It is first a spiritual reality. At the point of believing this, nothing in your life will show like this is true. But your assignment is to believe it. I'm sharing with you my mentality. A position advantage. A far above mentality. A far above mentality. Far above mentality, you exempt yourself from the wickedness, the vicissitudes of life. That you know that I am victorious. Regardless what happens, I am victorious. Belief system number one is an understanding of your positional advantage in Christ. Can we continue? Number two, the second belief system that programs victory in the believer's life is the consciousness of your oneness with Christ. The consciousness of your oneness with Christ. Please write it. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 17. NIV. We read that already. It says that he that is in union with Christ. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. It says that he is one spirit with him. He who unites himself with the Lord is one spirit with him. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Give us amplified of Ephesians 6 and verse 10. Look at what it says. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. There is an implication. You are united with him. Whatever flows from him flows to you and through you to your world. You are united with him. The consciousness of your oneness. Listen, how do you stand and make declarations? These are your hands. The same hands you had as a baby. What suddenly changed in the hands? That you lay it on someone and then the person gets healed. What changed? It is a consciousness. What changed? The same mouth that you used to take breast milk as a baby. The same mouth that you used to eat all your life. The same mouth you used to look for trouble with. What suddenly changed that you make a declaration in the name of Jesus, let doors be open and people say amen and return with testimonies. What changed? The same brain that you have that you went to class, you forgot a lot of things. Now you can stand and then be telling someone something about his life when you were not there. What changed? The consciousness of your oneness. The consciousness. The Bible says you are hidden with Christ and Christ in God. Now it's a process to get that consciousness to be crystallized. But that you are responsible for beginning that journey. You must plant that consciousness in you. Hallelujah. 
Is someone listening? The victor's mindset, number two. The consciousness of your oneness. Your oneness with Christ. Your oneness with Christ. Everything that answers to Jesus must answer to me. In the name of Jesus. Jesus went to every land and there was a structure for him to rise. So it would be with me. Jesus said, as I was or as I am. He said that, so are you now. So are you now. As he was, as he walked upon the earth, he says, so are you. Can you imagine that? You watch the life of Jesus and see the dexterity, the excellence that emanated from his life. And yet many believers who claim to be one with him were not manifesting the possibilities that come with that oneness. Not because the statement is untrue, but because we have not established that consciousness. Number three. What is the third belief system for victory in the kingdom? Are you ready? Your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs, philosophies, and ideas. Let me take it again. Your life, this is the third mindset you must have, that your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. Your life will eventually, ladies and gentlemen, be an expression of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. That means the quality of your life, or otherwise, first from a spiritual standpoint, then spilling over to every area of your life, will be a merciless reflection of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. Something about God you do not know can make you live a defeated life. Something about Satan you do not know can make you live a defeated life. Something about men you do not know can make you live a defeated life. Your life is not just dependent on your job. Your life is not just dependent on government. Your life is not just dependent on relatives or situations and circumstances. Many of us are blaming the wrong things. The real factor that controls the quality of your life, believe me, is your beliefs your philosophies, your ideas. Is someone learning? Number four. Are you ready for the fourth belief system? Without consistent decisions and actions, comma, without consistent decisions and actions, comma, life and destiny remains stagnant. Without consistent decisions and actions, Please, if you're writing underlying decisions, underline actions. Without consistent decisions and actions, life and destiny remains stagnant. That means your pace in life is at the mercy of the consistency of your decisions and your actions. Great decisions, great actions. And then great actualization of destiny. No decision, no action, and your destiny remains. Deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 19 and 20. Without consistent decisions and actions, life and destiny remain stagnant. How true and powerful this is. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. Is that in your Bible? I have set before you blessing and cursing. Therefore, Choose life, not wish life. Choose life that both you and thy seed may live. Verse 20. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God. This is the implication of choosing life. That thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life and the length of thy days. And that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give them. Please listen to me. Ladies and gentlemen, one day ego better is not a wise approach to life. My life and your life today is a product of your decisions. A decision is not a wish. A wish is a blind desire. A decision is an intentional wish backed up by the willingness to pay whatever price to make it happen. So there is a difference between a wish. Many people are wishing, not deciding. I wish to move from here to here. That is a wish. I decide to move from here to here. Means one, I have placed that desire. But together with that desire, I am willing to pay whatever price in righteousness to get there. I want the anointing. That is a wish. I want to know scripture. That is a wish. I want to be a great man. That is a wish. Those are not decisions. 
until you include the responsibility factor in your desires they are still wishes and many believers respectfully speaking preachers politicians people aspiring to be great it does not matter what kind of prophecy is on your head if you do not sustain the discipline to decide and then to act so if i have two people here one is wishing for a great life I wish I'll be great. In fact, I desire greatness. I desire power. I desire to be mightily used by God. Another person right from his or her lowly estate is making that decision. And then the person now takes a step further to honor that decision. There is always action that must honor your decisions for destiny to move. Are we together? I like the way this man is playing his keyboard. I like the way this man is playing his drum. That is a desire. I'm sure one day I'll become like the drummer. You are, you are just wishing. The day you decide to be a drummer, you say, I have decided. What does it take? And the easiest way is to meet those who are already in, they are living the reality of your desire. Sir, what did you do to get this? He will tell you, are you ready? Okay, there is a school. Then you submit yourself to it. Are we together? Someone says, I want power. Okay. You've been saying it from 2018, 2019. Oh, more power. 2020, more power. Someone will say, honestly, I desire power because the power is required to actualize destiny and to birth the purposes of God in the lives of people. And the person goes to find out how. What are the keys that control genuine power? When that person becomes empowered, the talkative is still there wishing. There are many people who want to be rich. I want to be rich. <laughs> no. Another person will sit down and get tired and say, I'm tired of stagnation and the limitations that come from it. In the name of Jesus, the Bible gives me the, all the allowance to attain unto wealth and abundance. What does it take? That person will get up and make a decision. Let me show you how destiny moves. From this day, I decide that I will not sleep until I spend at least one hour every day studying a book on wealth and abundance, following a program that helps me. That is someone who has decided someone who wants to become a great man of God I will I will not rest until I spend one day at least praying for one or two hours one hour studying videos and scripture it may not look like all the time but the person has started let me tell you the one who will become the one who is taking action destiny is at the mercy of decisions and actions more than prophecy let me repeat destiny is at the mercy of decisions and actions more than prophecy that means if nobody ever has a chance to prophesy to your life but you can take the prophecy of scripture and believe it and make decisions out of it and act i guarantee you no power in existence will stop you from manifesting versus somebody who says amen and even places oil on your head and you go back and not act this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you war a good warfare a good warfare someone met me and said one of the father of faith laid hands on me and from that day my life never became the same he was just communicating his observation i looked at him i said you are right but you need to go and see what i did with that laying on of hands don't you think that i just jumped and said oh hands have come upon me no you go back and do something with it. Hallelujah. Apostle God is prospering koinonia, growing in leaps and bounds. I agree. But you go back and see the back end of what happens. You know how much time it takes to prepare what you are hearing now? The kind of research. I hope you know that it's not just scripture that brings this information. You are going to consult references with intelligence. It takes time. It's not like there is a book that has all the ideas for you. You piece them together by sitting down. When others are sleeping, you are awake and God is honoring the actions and moving your destiny forward. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare that from today, I make quality decisions and I take quality actions. There are many of you here. I will build. I will build. I will build. You said that when land was 10 million and you had 30 million in your account. I will build. While you were saying that somebody was in 100 level, the person finished and took a step of faith. He said, all I have is 1 million. I will go and meet the owner of the estate and say in the name of Jesus, show me favor. Who will experience favor of the two? And he meets that man and he says, you're a young man. You seem to be very ambitious. Okay, come. I will help you. Take half plot of land. And the person laughs. Whereas the person who does not have anything we say half plot is too small can't you build there and rent it out later on decisions 
Many have not decided to be great. Many have not decided to be serious. You have not decided to make your prayer life a priority. Do you know something about the human will? The anointing of God will always move the direction of your true decisions. That when you make up your mind and say from this day forward. Hallelujah. Everybody say decisions. Say actions. I want you right now while you are watching me, write three things. That you will decide upon and you will take immediate action by the spirit and not stop till you see results as god puts it in your heart for some of you is building for some of you is your health for some of you is re-engineering your entire life for some of you you need to put your ministry or your life in order please write it by the spirit this is why you came to church don't assume I am a father, but my wife has been the one taking care of the family. It started when I lost my job in 2015. Thank you, sir. With all due respect, the Bible says any man that cannot take care of his family, that, that time is too long for you to remain in that state. Therefore, make a decision that in the name of Jesus Christ, I will rise to my responsibility as a father. I've been having a pain in my body. I said, I will go to the hospital one day. It's like the pain is increasing. You know? Something is swelling around my stomach. Um, I'm sure one day, maybe miracle service November, I will come. No. Every time you fail to decide, you give the devil a chance to destroy you. Every time you fail to decide, you give the devil a chance to destroy you. Every time you fail to decide, you give the devil a chance to destroy you. Let's hurry up. Is someone getting a new mindset so number one mindset is an understanding of your positional advantage in Christ number two your oneness with Christ number three that your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs your philosophies and your ideas number four that without consistent decisions and actions life and destiny remains stagnant are you ready for number five number five is a very com is a very consoling orientation that you must have challenges are not unusual and can always be surmounted please write this is the fifth belief system that programs you for victory challenges are not unusual at all and can always be surmounted psalm 34 19 psalm 34 19 many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivered him out of how many all Look at me, when you, when you face challenges on your path to destiny, your path to ministry, your path to knowing God, do not sit back and pretend as though it was something that was lack of faith. There are many times challenges are proof that you are moving forward. If you are not driving a car, it does not enter any pothole. If you are not driving a car, you will never face traffic. A car that is stagnant and not moving does not have any challenge. Am I, am I, am I talking to you? yes many of you the challenges that you face on the way is proof that there is motion happening in your life and every time you face challenges rather than pretending around it hiding it and wasting time confront it headlong and be victorious over it jump that hurdle and keep moving okay you started a business and the business crashed you made a mistake and gave your money to 419ers. For how long are you going to cry? Use the money you lost as your school fees in the school of wisdom. You see, the thing about the school of wisdom is the moment you graduate, your school fees is given back to you, no matter how much you spend. Listen, I want you to believe what I am telling you. Anything that comes as a loss while learning, convert it to your school fees in the school of wisdom. There's no time. Now I know better. Now I can learn better. Let me reposition myself. There are people today, when you ask them why their lives are like that, they will say, in 1991, I was a pastor. This pastor thing you are doing, we did it all. Something, rain came and washed our church. And then when that happened, armed robbers came and stole my car and my Bible. Is that why till today, 2023, you are not rising? Is that a valid excuse? Whereas in that same journey, there are people when they started, they lost their father, they lost their mother, they lost their loved ones, they lost whatever it is. In the midst of it, they said, I will wear it destiny till I become. Are we together? Yes. Oh, I, I don't have money to go for the conference, but I must find a way to follow it. Thank God for internet. Please. Let me meet a friend and plead with him. I'm on my way becoming. I should have been at a conference. I don't have the money. Can you help me with 2,000 Naira? Let me try and get, you know, materials 
from that conference and I will listen to. That is the, the determination. Listen, challenges, I repeat, are not unusual. You are not just because people don't tell you their challenges. Ah, this man is so easy. Things just happen like that. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Are we together? Challenges are not unusual. The Bible says in, sec in 2 Corinthians 2.14, please give it to us. I hope God is speaking to someone. 2 Corinthians 2.14 Now thanks be unto God which always causeth us to triumph in Christ. Is that in your Bible? And make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. If you had seen us the first time we held crusade, the first time when we organized a crusade, if they ever told you that this is what this ministry will become, you will not imagine it. Imagine going for a crusade and you do not even have money to pay the place where people will stay. You heard the story. We hired sound people from Kaduna and you can imagine owing and shouting on a crusade ground. Jesus heals. Jesus delivers. And the people you are owing are well, after you finish all that miracle and you know the thing with people, they come and receive and go and leave you. The God that sent you and brought you, let him vindicate you. Apostle, but I started a church. I was so vibrant in my vision. I saw a thousand people. First service, only me and my wife. My, fr my friend, continue. I encourage you in the Lord. Continue. Continue. Provided is God that led you. But Apostle, how, how all the money that I spend publicizing, it's not publicity that brings men. It's a track record in the spirit. You continue. God is giving you a beautiful story you are trying to rob yourself of. Pray together with your wife. Let her be the choir director. You are the preacher. If you drop offering, she will count it. Think of how beautiful that story will be when God makes your ministry global. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Challenges are not unusual. Apostle God gave me a word that in three months I'm going to build my house. Now it's one year my house was not built. Accept it as a deficiency in your hearing. That was not God. Just see that you're a student in the school of hearing. You are growing instead of you and say God but you said this don't make a fool of your understanding just say I can hear God better forgive yourself for not hearing well and now start hearing well and, and if you cannot hear well borrow the ears of those who have through faith and patience have developed hearing that works you can borrow the ears of others while your own is being trained is someone learning I'm doing something to your mind today you will leave this place a sign and a wonder Believe me, challenges are not unusual. Apostle, do you know you are just speaking about my case? I trekked from home to come here. We have trekked before. This man you are seeing, I trekked. So it is not, um, it, don't, it's not even an affliction. It's just the law of seasons. Don't, it's not an affliction at all. Hallelujah. That's too small to be called an affliction. The devil will not afflict you with that cheap thing. If the devil wants to afflict you, you will bring something that is serious. Trek with honor. Shabako Siata, and you are trekking for Koinonia. And while you are saying that, you are saying this is a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. You will trek and sit outside, and one day light from heaven will land on your head. And from that place, you will rise to become a champion. And people will see your life and say, You are so lucky. Then tell them, Sit down. Let me tell you how luck works. That one day I trek with no food. Apostle, how about me who has not eaten? It's so sad. God will raise comfort for you. But my friend, do not leave your training because of that. Don't call things problems. Call them challenges. Do you believe what, what I'm saying? Apostle, I was invited for a meeting. I prayed and fasted. When I got there, I even forgot the anchor scripture. And I preached all kinds of things. Nobody was looking at... I mean, while they were looking at me, I thought I did something wrong. I didn't know that I was not making sense. I was just my sermons i was preaching the goal was to preach on faith i ended up preaching on something else don't worry make your mistakes with honor that will become your testimony it's a ladder you are rising upon hallelujah run away from people who never met challenges on their path to greatness you are standing before a risk a big risk challenges qualify people to be able to mentor and raise others. We teach people from pain, not just victory. 
Victory is what brings people, but pain is what... Let no man trouble me. Is it not in your Bible? For I bear in my body. Before you listen to people, tell them, show me your scars. A testament of endurance. A testament. Do you know there was a time in my life I did everything right? Till today with what I know, I know I did everything right. It was just not the season for manifestation. Nothing. There was nothing wrong as far as I know sincerely. So you are saying, Apostle, I've done everything right. Everything you are saying is what I'm doing. My brother, continue. If the cloud be full of rain, they empty themselves. Continue the giving. Man of God, keep praying. Keep praying. Apostle, but should I start ministry? Because there's the pressure. Even though the voice of God has not come, stay there and remain. The ones I've trained, I've started ministry. You stay there. The blueprint of your destiny is not the same. But the day his voice comes, it will come with majesty and it will lift you and compensate you for your obedience. You believe that? Shout aloud, Amen. amen. Hmm. Number six. <laughs> Are you ready? Belief system number six. This world is a world of men. Therefore, advancement is based on relationships. The sixth mindset you must have. This world, write it down please is a world of men this world is a world of men therefore advancement is based on relationships if you do not sustain this mindset respectfully speaking you will fail in patterns this world is a world of men therefore advancement is based on relationships psalm 115 and verse 6 let's hurry up psalm 100 and 16 and 15 and verse 6 verse 16 i meant to say psalm 115 verse 16 the heaven even the heaven of heavens are the lord's read with me the remaining part please but the earth has he given to the children of men one more time but the earth has he given to the children of men the earth as far as as the activities within the cosmos is concerned i have told you destiny actualization is men dependent not only god dependent when you are functioning in the realm of the spirit you do not need men but ladies and gentlemen please hear me you want to walk in victory you must understand the dynamics of relationships as far as actualizing destiny is concerned this was a tragedy of the man at the pool of bethesda john 5 6 and 7. jesus comes to the man and he saw him there and knowing he had been there a long time said unto him will thou be made whole hear the man's reply seven the impotent man answered and said i have no man in other words i did not invest in relationships it is not because the water cannot heal it says when the water is troubled to put me into the pool but while i am coming another who has relationships will step in before me relationships are very powerful This world is a world of men. It's a revelation that when I caught, changed my life. When I pray to God, I also pray to him to touch men. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. The house that you are trusting God for is not in heaven. It's in the earth. The keys are in somebody's hand right now. The job that you are trusting God for, the assignment of God as the father of spirits is to manipulate the hearts of men to be ready to walk his purposes in your life. Your assignment is to use the wisdom of relationships to connect. Everything multiplies on the basis of relationship, plants and animals. When I, I, I was doing a study some time ago, when you study um, microbiology and I, I believe even biochemistry, you see the way a, a single cell begins to break itself in rapid succession until it becomes a full-grown human. It's a miracle. A, a marvelous miracle. That means when you are rejecting that little cell, you are rejecting a human being. Are we together now? This is how it is. A line, watch this now. A line is simply a connection between two points. Mathematics and uh, geometry teaches us am I right you cannot call a point a line for you to have a line you must have two points any point at all and then you connect them so what you call a line is simply two points agreeing to be together that's what you call a line you alone will never be able to make any progress but in connection to someone else 
And if you do not know how to respond to that someone else, you can miss destiny. If Jesus did not know how to connect to John the Baptist, he would have missed destiny. If Jesus did not know how to connect to the disciples, he would have missed the continuation of the gospel after his ascension. Relationships are very important. Belief system number six. This world is a world of men. And therefore, advancement of any sort is based on relationships. We're almost there. Let me give you seven. Please go back and study this. I have handed to someone in this service the keys to the prayers that you have been praying. Lord, why is my life like this? Are you ready for, for number seven? Who you become as you walk with God. Please write. Who you become as you walk with God is by far greater than what you acquire. Who you become as you walk with God is by far greater than what you acquire that means your transformation is greater than your acquisition who you become as you walk with God is by far greater than what you acquire that means when you probe the great their, their greater sense of worth comes from who they have become not what they have acquired when you begin to acquire things chances are excellent that your mind shifts from your transformation to enjoy the things that you have cars houses and all kinds of privileges but as you walk the school of the wise and as you walk the path of victory the victor's path you will know that who you become is more important than what you acquire on the way what you acquire can come and go but who you become remains with you forever the seventh mindset that you must have. Your becoming is greater than your doing, greater than your having. Most people are interested in having before becoming. They want to be billionaires. They want to be anointed men and women. But they are interested in the anointing, not God. Are you seeing that now? I hope you know that interest in the anointing minus God is idolatry. Your faith and your desire is on the oil, not the relationship. Who you become is greater than what you acquire. Many years ago, I studied this and it did not make sense to me. How will you tell me who I am becoming is greater than what I have? Listen to me. Every time you have something that does not match your becoming, it will leave your life. I promise you. It will leave your life. It is a law. That is the reason why you find out that people can inherit physical estates or inherit physical things that is inconsistent with their transformation. Eventually, they will lose it through a series of inexplainable events. Who you become as you walk with God is by far greater than what you acquire. What you acquire on the way, what you acquire from God is greater, is of lesser value than who you become. Can I give you number eight? Write this down. Everything in your life only becomes valuable when it is connected to purpose. Everything in your life, this is the mentality of the victor. Everything in your life only becomes valuable when it is connected to purpose. Everything in your life only becomes truly valuable when it is connected to purpose please write and look up let me explain that and then i give you the last i hope god has spoken to you today that means nothing in itself is truly valuable it is only valuable to you relative to your perception eventually you will find out that what you admired and were happy about will no longer interest you what makes things indefinitely valuable is their ability to serve purpose not the things themselves for instance your certificate remember the first day you collected it you were jumping up and down now you've not seen it for years you don't even know where it is honestly and quite honestly many do not care do you know why because until it is connected to purpose in itself it will not profit you another example strangely so is the car that you buy you can buy that car imagine you buy a car you cannot drive and there's nobody to drive you eventually what was a blessing will annoy you because it is not serving purpose the the goal of that car is that it's able to move you to help you achieve your goals but imagine with me that you buy a car for instance and someone puts it uh, you know to to the drive uber or bolt with it for you and something is coming with it and you are using it to pay the school fees of your children you see that that car becomes valuable because it is helping you serve a bigger purpose 
Every time you come to God and say, give me, the question you hear from heaven is for what? Give me power, reply, for what? Let me make a name for myself. Make reference to Genesis 11. I don't waste that kind of thing. God will tell you, I don't waste time on purposeless things. Nimrod Kush said, let us build a city and make a name for ourselves. And God said, that is not it. Lord, give me wisdom and understanding heart. Solomon, for what? I am young and you have given me leadership over a great people. Who but you is able to lead them? Give me an understanding heart that I may lead them and guide them in discretion. And God said, you qualify. I will not only give you an understanding heart, I will give you riches, wealth and honor like no one has had. Listen to me. Everything you have in your life that cannot be connected to purpose will not only frustrate you, but can be used as a tool by the devil to destroy you, even if it is God that gave you. Beauty without purpose can be converted to a tool of destruction for both you and others. Intellect without, there's what we call evil genius. Is that true? People who God gave intelligence but because it was not connected to divine purpose can be used by the devil for your destruction. You watch how Satan used things that God gave men to destroy them. Samson was given an unusual ability to be strong but he thought it was just strength. He did not know what that strength was supposed to be for. It was supposed to be that by his strength he would become a judge over Israel. Everybody say purpose. One more time. Can I tell you, listen, ladies and gentlemen, most people do not know the importance of purpose. They just come and they say, well, I just want money. And you keep acquiring and acquiring and acquiring and acquiring. Then you make the mistake of the rich fool. You now build banks. In this case, a bank account. Snatch them and say, my soul, find rest. And all of a sudden, they diagnose, respectfully speaking, that there is some sickness somewhere. And you find out that money cannot attend to it again. And they say the man has two weeks to leave. And now there are billions stats there. He hid it from his wife, hid it from his children, hid it from himself, did not spend it. The kingdom was not blessed by it. It was kept there. Wealth without purpose. Make up your mind today that everything God gives you, you are going to connect it to divine purpose. Lord, why did you give me this lovely voice? There are many of you who are singing here, who when you hear the worship team sing, you smile because something, there is a connection. God gave you a wonderful voice. You should be singing his praises to the nations, but you are there just wondering, I'm sure, God, one day, my own is that I want to marry, that's my own. And God is saying, for what? <laughs> you see, I said marriage and I'm seeing people smile. And now you are using God as a ladder to quickly get married. At least let me come to church. I know that in church, who knows what God can do? <laughs> are we together? All my own is to get, I just want a job. That's my own. I want to move from this one room to a three bedroom flat. Why? All my friends are living in duplexes and God says nonsense. That's too small a reason. You can fast from the lens of that lost, you will not get the hand of God. Let me tell you something. One secret to answer prayer is connect your desires to divine purpose. Let me repeat. Connect your desires to divine purpose. Lord, give me a husband. Give me a wife. You are not speaking his language. For what? Are we together? Lord, give me money. I want money. And you are shouting for five minutes. All God is hearing is money. Money, I said, calm down. This thing is the lost. It's, it's lost. It's not prayer. What do you want the money for? Lord, I've suffered. Are you not seeing? Mm -mm. I've suffered is not an answer. I can raise somebody to help you, but money will not touch your hand. When you have a need, he will give you. Will you agree? No, I want it in my hands. And God says, for what? But now watch this. As funny as this is, I hope you are learning. Father, I have learned by revelation and through the ministry of the teaching priest that financial resources are important for my living a comfortable life, important for participating in your kingdom advance agenda. Lord, I am available. That one prayer, I can tell you, expect a reply. Kingdom driven prayers are the kinds of prayers that receive answers. Lost driven prayers is simply carnality using spirituality to meet its need. Hallelujah. We pray competitive prayers. Lord, you have given this person, this lady that came when, when, now I'm here. Oh. Mm -mm. 
It's amazing. You just listen to the prayer of Christians, especially when they're alone. And you just be God yourself and be listening. Imagine that that prayer is coming to your throne. And just hear what the people are saying. And then at the end, we end it with, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. His name is mighty, no doubt. But that thing you have said needs editing. Father, I'm tired of not being anointed. The other day, I said, let the power of God will move now. And nobody fell. And God says, what for? What exactly? What does the falling do to you? It's because people are not falling that they are not inviting me. I have, I, by now, my life would have been... Everything in life is only truly valuable when it is connected to purpose. In John 18 and verse 37, John 18, 37, give it to us please. John 18, 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end, did you see it now? To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. In other words, Jesus said, I do not have any personal agenda on my own. I am here to bear witness to the truth. I am here to bear witness to the truth. For as long as John the Baptist was walking in purpose, nobody could kill him. When the assignment was done, he said himself that I may decrease, that he might increase. He now went into doing things that were not connected to purpose. And it landed him in prison, offense multiplied his tragedy, and he was beheaded. Not a wise way for someone who had worked with God. Everything I desire in my life, I always ask my question. I ask this question and, and from the depth of my heart, how does this that I want serve the purposes of the kingdom? I'm giving you a very superior spiritual orientation. It is not that God cannot lift you. Father, give me a global ministry. The question is for what? Lord, raise me like Esther. Bring a Hazarus to come and marry me. It's not that God cannot bring a Hazarus, but for what? I just want the joy of being queen. And God said, ask Vashti. That's exactly how she was thinking. And that's why she left the palace. But I realized that the salvation of the Jews from her man and all those who are the enemies of God's process is depending on me. Therefore, take me to the palace. With speed, God will take you there. Believe what I'm telling you. You find people's prayer answered to the degree to which it is connected to kingdom. Lost driven prayer, whether in secret or in the open, will always end you in destruction. Competitive prayer, that one you just console yourself that you are praying. You know our idea of winning on earth is that only one person must win. Because that is how we have been educated to believe winning. So you outshine to win. But in the kingdom, all can be winners because winning is with respect to the will of God, not with respect to who you rise above. In our secular academic program, you are only called a winner when you bring others down and you stand alone. But in the kingdom, you are not a winner when you bring others down. You are a winner to the degree to which your life fulfills the will and the purposes of God. Is someone learning? Now, let me give you the last and we'll wrap up for today. The last is a very major point, a major mind construct idea. Mind construct idea. Listen carefully. Everything in your life. Okay, verse, okay, number nine now. The only real assets you have are God, your peace, and your fulfillment. Please write. Hmm. The only real assets that you have in this life are God, your relationship with God. Number two, your peace. Number three, your fulfillment. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but ladies and gentlemen, respectfully speaking, with respect to destiny and an eternal perspective, your account is not an asset. The land you have is not an asset. It is only an asset when it is looked at from an economic standpoint. From the standpoint of the spirit, eternity, and destiny, in fact, your only real assets, the only real assets you have, I repeat, are number one, your relationship with God. Number two, your peace. Number three, your fulfillment. What is fulfillment? Make reference to my teaching, What Seekest Thou? 
I define fulfillment as the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. That is God's idea of fulfillment. I take number nine again. The only real assets that you have are your relationship with God, your peace, and your fulfillment. Jeremiah chapter 9 from 23 and 24. Let's find something somewhere to pray now. Thus said the Lord, let not the wise man, Koinonia, please listen. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. 24. But let him that glory, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. The real asset of the believer is the wealth of your knowing God. John 17 and verse 3. This is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus, whom thou hast sent. Your real asset is your relationship with Jesus. John 14, 27. John 14, 27. Peace, shalom, I live with you. My peace give I unto you, not as the world giveth, give I to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Please look at me. No matter what you have in this life and no matter your level of achievement and accomplishment, ask anybody who has lived long enough upon this earth. Does not matter what field and frankly speaking, does not even matter whether he's a Christian or not. You just meet someone who has experienced the blessing of longevity and ask them what things from your experience among the many things you feel are really valuable. They will tell you peace. The highest definition of success for me is peace. Beyond progress, peace. Hello there, Transform Believer. Welcome to the commentary section of Transform Daily YouTube channel. I believe you were blessed by this sermon. I know that the sermon is long, but I hope you were able to watch it to the end because every single thing, every single important point Apostle listed in this video, which I will not want to go over to bore you again, is valid, is true. But there's something I want to share in this commentary section, so I hope you stay tuned and listen to me and be encouraged by it, right? My name is Kola Dave Goldman and I bring you commentaries on sermons that are preached by God's servant apostle, Joshua Selman. I just want to encourage anybody that is watching this video, if you're going through a hard time and you're going through a challenge in your life at this moment, I want you to know that that is not the end of life and you would go through it and come out of it and God will give you victory. No matter how dark it looks, sometimes the darkest point in your life is closer than you think to the day, to the brightest moment. I tell you the truth. Um, I want you to envision the kind of life you want and don't stop dreaming about it one goal the enemy has when you are in a dark place in your life is to keep you from seeing light keep you from seeing um, beyond that place you are once he can succeed in you know blocking your mentality your vision your mind he has succeeded i tell you the truth he has succeeded indeed so you should um use this opportunity listen to these mentalities because everything taught on this platform is geared towards changing your life giving you a better spiritual life changing the way you think and you know giving you an advantage in your work with god i want you to hold it up in your chest hold it up in your chest the things you learn and decide dedicate your time into feeding your mind with the right things so I've come to the end of this particular sermon on the mentality of the victor. If you want to get the full message, that's the full message on Koinonia Global. I decided to share it because it helps people to assimilate. It's better and it gives me time to also digest the sermon in order to give my commentaries, right? But today I'm just here to encourage you that it is not over until it's over. God is going to step in for you and challenges are not the end of life. 
just find peace in everything you're doing. Just find peace, you know, with God and with man and with everything you're doing. And God will make a way for you where there seems to be no way. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Do well to like this video. It tells the YouTube algorithm that the video blessed you and to share it to more people. And also subscribe to this channel as you do so. God will bless you. Let us know what you learned from the video in the comment section. And let us know where you're watching from too. We'll see you when we post our next video. Bye and God bless you.